Good afternoon. It's a beautiful spring day here in Charlottesville, and I hope it is the same wherever you're joining us from as well. My name is Amy Carr. I'm the Chief Development Officer for UVA Health and the Executive Director of the UVA Health Foundation. I'm also an alum of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. I'm thrilled to welcome all of you to today's discussion about the groundbreaking work of UVA Cancer Center, which the National Cancer Institute recently designated a comprehensive cancer center. We are grateful you are here to learn about the vital work we're doing to change the course of cancer and what becoming a comprehensive cancer center means to you and communities across the region. Thank you for the insightful questions that many of you already submitted for the panel discussion today. Leaders from the Cancer Center are here to answer as many of those inquiries as time allows and shed light on the center's crucial research, clinical trials and therapies, which are saving lives and improving cancer prevention, diagnosis and treatment in Virginia and beyond. Before we get started, I wanted to share a few housekeeping notes. Today's program is being recorded, but only the presenter names and images will be visible. We will share a link to the recording in a follow-up email. You may enter questions for our panel at any time during the program using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Only the panelists and the moderator will be able to see the questions that you submit. Please keep in mind that our panelists cannot provide medical advice or answer personal medical questions during the webinar. We ask that you frame your questions to be of general interest to the other members of our audience. We will be providing information in the chat about how to get in touch with UVA Cancer Center for specific medical questions. And we will also share links to additional resources in an email following the program. And now I'd like to invite our esteemed panel of speakers to turn their cameras on while I introduce them. So our panelists include Dr. Tom Lochran, who is the director of UVA Cancer Center. Tom joined UVA Cancer Center eight years ago, and he has led the successful effort to gain the Comprehensive Cancer Center designation. He's helped develop the center into one of the finest in the nation. We also have Dr. Kimberly Kelly, who is a UVA professor of biomedical engineering and a scientist and entrepreneur. She is the founder and CEO of Zeal Bio Inc., which is a company focused on bringing new cancer treatments to market. And we will also hear from Wendy Mbugwa, a registered nurse and interim administrator for cancer services here at UVA. Wendy provides leadership and strategic oversight of the operational, clinical, and financial outcomes of the oncology service line, both here at UVA and for five regional sites within the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we're honored to have today's panel discussion moderated by Gary Taylor who's a 1985 graduate of UVA's College of Arts and Sciences, as well as an emeritus member of UVA Cancer Center's advisory board. So before I turn the program over to Gary, I'd like to invite our special guest, Dr. Craig Kent, to join us on screen. Dr. Kent is the CEO of UVA Health and Executive Vice President for Health Affairs at the University of Virginia. As a researcher, educator, and physician, Dr. Kent is an internationally recognized leader in academic medicine, as well as an accomplished vascular surgeon. He is joining us briefly to share a few words about UVA's latest achievements in cancer care. So please welcome Dr. Kent. Thanks, Amy, Uh, much appreciated. And uh, thanks to all of you for spending uh, time with us today. Uh, As you'll learn quickly, we're pretty proud of our cancer center. uh, And I think we deserve to be proud. Uh, One of the great jobs parts of being a CEO of a health system is they actually pay you to brag. And and I'm going to do a lot of that uh, uh, today because we just have one of the best cancer centers in the country. I think as Amy mentioned, and you'll learn more about today, uh, we just achieved uh, a a very elite status for our cancer center, comprehensive cancer center. It's a given to 52 cancer centers across the country. And these are the top uh, institutions in the country that provide the most differentiated care and the most cutting edge research. And so we're amongst those. Uh, 52 in the country, only one in the state of Virginia. And we're proud to be that institution in the state. Uh, um, One of the reasons that we achieved that status is because we're a referral center from all across the state and and, uh, from many neighboring states for patients that have most complex cancer that come here for very specialized treatments. So one of, one of the 
uh, parts of becoming a comprehensive center is you actually have to apply for it. First, you have to become a really great cancer center, then you have to apply. And just to uh, complement our cancer center team, the uh, 1300 page application that we had to put together uh, to be successful in achieving this status. Most places that apply to become a comprehensive center have to apply multiple times over many years. Uh, this was our first application and we were successful. So very proud of the team that put that application together. Uh, a few uh, accomplishments that helped us achieve that status. Uh, we do an incredible amount of research uh, here at UVA, cutting edge research that really improves the care of cancer patients. Uh, the therapies are changing so rapidly over the years and we're proud to be at the forefront of many of those discoveries. Uh, some uh, specific numbers, uh, we've increased research at UVA over the last uh, five years by 45%. We actually have $30 million a year that come into the Cancer Center to uh, promote the incredible research that we accomplish. Our clinical research, our clinical trials have increased uh, almost 500% over the last five years. So uh, a lot of growth in the really innovative care that we're uh, taking uh, care of patients. Um, the, another part of being a comprehensive cancer center is that you create research here, innovations here, that get translated into clinical trials. So, so uh, uh, someone in the laboratory makes a discovery, uh, we then translate it, and we have a first in human study here right at UVA. Uh, we have over 20 of those trials. And again, these are ideas that were generated right here and are available to people of the state of Virginia, but not in other places. So, so that's part of being a comprehensive uh, uh, center. Uh, another part of uh, cancer care is uh, uh, preventing it. Uh, the best way to cure cancer is to never get it in the first place. And so a large part of our program Program is focused on preventative programs throughout the state, particularly in the south central and southwestern part of the state. And we believe through those programs that we've developed many more to come. Uh, we're saving lots of lives by preventing people from uh, achieving cancer in the first place. There's a statistic um, you know, that was uh, uh, promoted by the American Cancer Society a few years ago. And what they did is they measured the outcomes of patients, adult patients that have cancer that go to comprehensive centers versus non-comprehensive centers. And what they found out that the survival rate was much higher if you go to a comprehensive center. And I think that's largely related to the incredible differentiated care that we can provide. So, so I, I, I think of myself as the, whenever I'm on the same stage with Tom Loughran as the warm up act. Uh, the main act is coming and that is Tom Loughran. Uh, Amy already introduced Tom. Uh, Tom's been with, with us for eight years. Uh, when he first arrived eight years ago, he was given one assignment, uh, make our cancer center one of the best in the country and make sure that it achieves comprehensive status. And lo and behold, uh, we accomplished that a few months ago. Uh, it's Tom, it's his incredible team that are congratulated uh, for being that successful. So, so Tom, thanks for being with us. Thanks to all of you for being with us. So proud of us here at UVA and what we've accomplished and the care that we're able to provide. And thanks for allowing me to be with you and brag for a few minutes. Uh, Tom, I turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Craig. That was a great summary of what we achieved. Um, and thank you for all attending. I wanted to really echo one point that Dr. Kent made, and that's now as a comprehensive cancer center, there's really no reason for anyone uh, to travel out of the state. We have all the expert docs to take care of any type of patient with cancer. That 1300 page application uh, is very metric and evidence driven in terms of a review from the National Cancer Institute. But the single uh, point that summarizes all our efforts is really the impact of the cancer center. And how has the universe, how has the cancer center taken maximum advantage of the strengths of the entire University of Virginia to have a tangible impact on the health of the patients and people that we serve? There are actually four specific milestones that we have to achieve to demonstrate comprehensive status. Um, and we did well in all these, or we would not be talking to you now about that. Um, the first one is that we have uh, exceptional depth and breadth of research in the three main areas of cancer research. These include basic cancer research, clinical cancer research, and population cancer research. The second one is really team science. And this is where the um, interaction with the University of Virginia is exceptionally important. We wanna make sure that we collaborate not only within the School of Medicine, but other schools within the Cancer Center that are members of the Cancer Center. They include the Schools of Engineering, School of Nursing, the Undergraduate School, the New School of Data Sciences, and then lastly, the School of Education. 
Uh, and then thirdly, a point that Craig already mentioned, it's extremely important for us to demonstrate impact in our community. Uh, and this is, partic this is a called community outreach and engagement. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. The fourth one is to make sure we have an exceptional training program uh, to make sure that uh, the next generation of scientists and physicians are ready to tackle cancer. Uh, as Dr. Kent mentioned, it really is a big team effort. And I'm delighted to be joined today uh, on the call and the, the Zoom presentation with a, a preeminent scientist, Dr. Kimberly Kelly, and also with our, our nursing colleague, Dr. W uh, Wendy Mabugwa, who is uh, in charge of strategic planning for the entire cancer center. And you'll hear about how our impact in cancer care is extending throughout the Commonwealth. So uh, last point I'd like to mention is that um, we could not have done this without strong institutional commitment. Again, this is a University of Virginia Cancer Center from President Ryan, uh, Dr. Kent, and we just had tremendous support throughout the university to achieve this milestone for the university to become an NCO designated comprehensive cancer center. Uh, I'll be here the rest of the day to answer any questions people may have. Uh, thanks so much. My name is Bob Falter, and I was in the Navy for 22 years. Now I'm a financial planner. I've been married for 25 years to a wonderful wife, Tammy. And so we live here in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Summer of 2015, I was diagnosed with uh, B-cell follicular lymphoma. It was pretty traumatic. I think whenever you hear the word cancer, it's just, um, it's a scary thought. He is the light in our family. And so losing him, oh my goodness, like I can't even imagine. Bob was uh, referred to me from uh, an outside facility in Winchester, and he was quite symptomatic at the time. Uh, we gave him uh, various rounds of chemotherapy, which was available. Um, and unfortunately, he did not respond very well to those. And finally, we decided to try some non-chemotherapy approaches with a drug called um, idelolicin. That put me almost in remission. But then January of last year, my legs started to swell again. And I said, well, the tumors are back. So at that point, um, thank goodness, there was an opening for the CAR T-cell treatment. It's a very novel therapy where we extract T-cells, genetically modify them into super soldiers, literally super soldiers, that are capable of identifying these tumor cells. And when they are inserted back into the, the person suffering with cancer, they go directly to the tumor and destroy the tumor in many instances and produce remarkable results. And that's what happened with Bob. We did two weeks in the hospital in March last year and then stayed in a hotel for two weeks in the first part of April. And it was an amazing treatment. When Dr. Indu took us in and said, let me show you the PET scan. And we both looked at each other and I said, well, where is it, Dr. Indu? She said, Tammy, it's gone. To me, that was a miracle. There are very few institutions, 20 or less, that are high performing, that perform more than five to six infusions a year. I consider this an honor to be able to treat patients like Bob, to be able to give such cutting edge therapy to people and, and to see it work in front of you. I would say that the future is very bright and hopeful for him. It is a very big thing that we have a comprehensive cancer center here in, in Virginia. When I first met Bob, he could not have traveled to a major academic center that he couldn't drive to. Some people are sick enough where that's just not possible. He feels great and he's back to doing all of his activities that he did, and if not better, than he was doing them before. Dr. Indu, Dr. Portel, UVA, have given me an extension on my contract with life. So it's been good. And now we're healthy and happy, you know? We got a wonderful life back. We are so grateful to Bob Falter, his wife, Tammy, his daughter, Lauren, and their dog for sharing their story about some of the life-changing work that's happening here at the Cancer Center. 
And thank you, Dr. Kent and Dr. Loughran for getting the program started. You have expertly set the stage for our panel to share more about what the Cancer Center's new status and recent achievements mean for cancer patients, cancer survivors, and their friends and families living right here in Charlottesville, across the Commonwealth, and even across the country. So as I turn it over to Gary Taylor to moderate our panel discussion, first, Gary, I'd like to ask you if you wouldn't mind sharing a few words about your involvement with UVA Cancer Center and why you so graciously agreed to help us with our webinar today. Of course. Thank you, Amy. I was introduced to the Cancer Center nearly 10 years ago when my then 15-year-old daughter was referred there for an abdominal mass that was successfully removed and thankfully benign. Shortly thereafter, I was invited to join the Cancer Advisory Board, and unfortunately, my connection only grew. My wife, Tana, was treated for breast cancer and ultimately for cancer of her bile duct cells that ultimately took her life nearly four years ago. Cancer impacts nearly every family in our community, and comprehensive status allows UVA to better fight and treat this disease. Um, I remarried a little over a year ago, and my wife, Lee Cantrell, is a GYN oncologist at UVA you could say that my connection is a very, very personal one. Um, now, I'd like to invite our panelists to come back on screen uh, so that we can begin our discussion. Perfect. Um, so uh, I have a few questions to get our conversation started, uh, and then we'll turn to questions from the audience. Remember that you may enter any questions at any time using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. First, Tom. Can you tell us about some of the groundbreaking discoveries and new treatments that have emerged from the UVA Cancer Center to help patients? Yeah, thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. I'd like to highlight two amazing discoveries that really transitioned from the basic science lab into the clinic with direct impact on our patients. First one is uh, highlighting the work of Dr. Craig Slingoff, who is really a pioneer in immunotherapy. He was working on the, in this field before it became established as a miraculous therapeutic advance for patients with cancer. Um, in a cross-grounds collaboration, again, highlighting team science, he and Don Hunt, the pioneer in developing uh, technology to identify particular proteins on cancer cells, were able to identify specific proteins for melanoma patients. So this was the first, one of the first discoveries in the entire world of something called tumor-specific antigens that really laid the groundwork for the entire field of precision medicine and targeted therapy. And importantly, it led to a pioneering program that's gone on for more than 20 years here at, the, uh, at UVA, led by uh, Craig, where patients literally from all around the world have traveled here to receive vaccines for treatment of melanoma. Now, vaccines are obviously in the news here for COVID, um, but they're also now having very good promise in cancer. So uh, I just received a note uh, about two weeks ago from a patient who had been treated by Craig 20 years ago, who was basically told nothing to do, um, you're dying from melanoma. He came here and he said, you know, I sat, I sat in Craig's clinic from, with patients from all around the country, received this peptide injection, now I'm healthy 20 years later. So that is a great example of tangible impact for our patients deriving from great science from UVA. Uh, a brief second um, vignette, if you will, is a, a team science award, actually a team science award from the Cancer Center that sponsored work from Dr. Patel that you heard from earlier on the videotape from our uh, patient, uh, Mr. Falter. But anyway, we um, basically were able to come up with using uh, computational modeling to try to figure out which drugs together we best to treat patients with uh, mantle cell lymphoma. There's also work of Dr. Mike Williams, who basically discovered the underlying problem of mantle cell lymphoma like two decades ago. Um, anyway, this was supported by philanthropic funding, led to a design of a really high impact clinical trial, and has revolutionized the care of patients with a deadly disease called mantle cell lymphoma. So these are two really uh, good examples. We got many others. Uh, taking advantage of UVA science from our lab and directly impacting the, bene uh, the benefit and health of our patients living with cancer now. Thank you, John. Kimberly, as a professor of biomedical engineering and cancer therapeutics program leader, can you tell us more about your research and your work at the UVA Cancer Center? 
Yeah, so my research as a biomedical engineer, um, uh, as Tom was just, or Dr. Lochran was just talking about with personalized medicine. So why is that so critically important? The old ways of finding cancer drugs um, cause a lot of side effects or toxicities. And so what we are trying to do when we are doing precision medicine or targeted medicine is to be able to deliver as much drug to the cancer to help to treat that cancer and improve patient outcomes without all the toxic side effects. And those who have had cancer or who have seen their loved ones go through some of these chemotherapies know that the toxicities associated with um, a lot of cancer therapies are, are unpleasant. So we, we want quantity of life, but also quality of life. As an engineer and in my lab research, I have developed a method using sophisticated bioinformatics and um, mathematics along with inter iterative wet lab um, using samples from the clinic and, and other things to identify new targets of disease, especially in pancreas cancer, bile duct cancer. So a lot of those cancers that have less than 5% five-year survival rates. We have identified one such target, cancer-specific plectin, and then I have spun out a company uh, in order to bring this to the clinic. And I'm happy to say that we have treated six patients now um, and UVA is one of the sites and UVA has treated two of our six patients. So it's early days, we're in the safety study for it, but it's a great example of doing work where you don't know where it's going to lead, but you have a really great idea and then being able to move it forward. So my work as the CRX or Cancer Therapeutics Program um, uh, with Chip Landon or Charles Landon is to help to get the basic science and then move that through to the clinic. Um, and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later, but that's our idea really great science in the lab, going through the clinical trials, and then ultimately community dissemination. So that way patients and their loved ones can benefit from everything that we do. Thank you, Kimberly. Wendy, um, as someone on and overseeing the front lines of patient care at the UVA Cancer Center, what do you think people should know about the kind of care the UVA Cancer Center provides and uh, what can someone newly diagnosed with cancer expect from the UVA Cancer Center? Thank you, Gary. Um, I think I, I'm in a re really privileged situation to be able to take um, the trials that are done with our researchers and actually bringing it to the patient and making sure that they're getting that treatment. So we are in a very uh, lucky position and with the comprehensive status that we currently have, that is one of our biggest strengths is really being there for the patient. So from a clinical care perspective, it's, um, it's taking care of the patients, not just from a research trials perspective, but also standard of care treatments. Um, so one of the few things that we do um, uh, really well, actually a lot of things that we do really well from a care perspective is uh, we provide really high quality cancer care um, and not only to the patient, but also ensuring, ensuring we are taking care of the whole person as well as their caregivers and family. Um, I think, you know, cancer is one of those diseases that um, affects people, not just the individual, but it's everybody around them that um, suffers from the disease as well. And making sure we're providing uh, resources to support the entire family. I think that is really a key thing that uh, we are so proud to do here. Um, the other thing is uh, in, in conjunction with that is uh, providing supportive care services. And when I talk about supportive care services, I'm talking about um, making sure we are providing nutritional uh, support for our patients, uh, making sure we are providing um, things to do with prevention, you know, tobacco cessation programs for our patients who smoke or who are family members who smoke, um, to making sure we're providing really great education um, so that people can really understand the impact of the therapies that they're getting and how they can better manage them um, at home. Uh, we created a really great program uh, here, which is an on-call rehab program um, 
program, which is really a rehabilitation or sort of a gym, if you think of a gym, it's a gym specifically for cancer patients. You know, the chemotherapy or the treatments they get can really impact their physical uh, muscles and body and making sure that we are keeping them up and make sure we're providing necessary treatments and exercise programs and consultations to make sure that they are going to be strong before, during and after their treatment. Um, the other thing I want to point out is really patient experience, right? This is one of those things that keeps people coming back and they will refer their family members to us and will attract people not just from Virginia, but also from outside of Virginia. Is that personalized, compassionate care that all our team members are really so proud of uh, providing to our patients. Uh, you know, we have seen when you see people who actually work in UVA, either coming back here for treatment or referring their family members for treatment here really speaks volumes to the kind of patient experience um, uh, that we are able to provide. And one last thing that I'd like to point out is the ability to take care of a patient from the moment they call in for an appointment to the moment that they leave and working together as a care team. When I talk about a care team, I'm referring, thinking about the scheduler, the front of person, the scheduler, the nursing team, the physician team, as well as the family working together as a care team and really providing the care to the patient in a more personalized, um, compassionate way is really something that uh, brings us all joy and uh, we are happy to provide. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Kimberly, can you see how the UVA Cancer Center collaborates with other departments and schools at UVA and how does this benefit cancer research? Yeah, so I would say the UVA Cancer Center is actually comprised of six different schools, as Dr. Lofren uh, mentioned. So it's not just the School of Medicine, um, it's School of Engineering, Education, Nursing, um, and the School of Medicine, so and, and the college at large. So as Wendy was saying, it, it starts really from that front desk and then goes all the way through nursing and the clinicians. On the basic science side, um, the more ways you look at a problem and try to solve it, the better we get at it. And so by having all of these collaborators and really looking at the problem from multiple points of view, you can really bring in that engineering. Um, you can bring in the education piece. It does you no good to build a new widget if people aren't gonna use it. So talking to the clinicians about what's being needed, I'm also talking to patient advocates and things. So it really helps us to design treatment specifically for patients and specifically for the individual um, cancers. So we have a lot of really nice studies that are um, that are ongoing and, and really have come from these team-based science, as Dr. Lochran said, um, where we put our we all get together and we use our expertise to really tackle this problem. That's great. Thank you, Kimberly. Tom, I understand that one of the pillars of becoming a comprehensive center is community-centered outreach, education, and research. Can you explain that to us? Sure, thanks, Gary. Um, this was actually our biggest challenge in becoming a comprehensive cancer center. So uh, UVA has been designated as a cancer center from the NCI since 1986 primarily based on the extraordinary strength of basic science discovery, some of which you've heard about already today. But we did not have an organized population research program at all. So we had to build that from scratch. And we had a, a tremendous investment and effort going on in outreach and education, but it was never formally reviewed from the NCI. So um, the two leaders in this area are Wendy Cohn, who's a uh, Associate Center Director for Community Outreach Education, and then Roger Anderson is the head of the population research program. So um, this is probably our most important mission as uh, Dr. Kent highlighted, you know, the biggest uh, solution to cancer problem is to prevent it from ever occurring. So this um, is really the main direction uh, or directive of the NCI is to understand the people that you're serving. So that's called technically our catchment area. And um, this is 87 counties in Virginia, but also around 10 in West Virginia, primarily characterized by rural underserved populations, 3.4 uh, million people, more than one third of them are rural and essentially Appalachia. So um, with tobacco settlement funds from the state, about 10 years ago, we invested 
uh, in community outreach and formed a uh, key advisory board in Southwest Virginia. And uh, we've extended that now throughout the entire catchment area. And we've had a, a big impact in the community, not only in education, screening, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, et cetera, but actually interventions in the community to alter bad behavior, like drinking too many Mountain Dews, which will lead to obesity. And then eventually, as we now recognize, obesity is the second leading cause, environmental cause of cancer. So um, the whole thrust of this program is to prevent cancer with direct engagement uh, with the community of the 3.4 million people that we serve. Thanks, Tom. Wendy, can you describe the kinds of treatments and services that UVA Cancer Center uh, offers patients in our region? Uh, yes, absolutely. So one of the services that I just talked about was the supportive care services. So in terms of services, that is one. And in terms of treatments, we have various different treatments that we offer our patients. So starting from uh, blood related cancers, women cancers, um, thinking about head and neck or lung cancers, um, stomach or GI cancers, uh, neuro-oncology program, um, and definitely one of the ones that was shown in the video was our cellular therapies program, which is part of the blood cancers, but specifically calling that program out because they are one of our really growing programs with new novel treatments really coming out um, as um, mentioned earlier, you know, our CAR-T therapies, they are keep increasing and they're coming, new therapies are coming out and making sure we position ourselves to where we can offer these treatments to people here in Charlottesville and in Virginia. Uh, one of some of the other programs that we are really proud of, of having as part of the cancer center is our palliative care program, which is really taking care of patients, relief of pain and providing um, a good quality of life for our patients as they go through this, um, this journey. And we have that within our building here in the main cancer center in Charlottesville. The other thing that we do is uh, we are working on really trying to expand our services and our footprint across Virginia. So we have other regional sites in uh, Fishersville, Augusta area. We have a site of, uh, in Culpeper Cancer Center, as well as two sites in uh, Pantops, which is our breast cancer center. Part of the women's program is located in the Pantops area and a clinic there too. We want to make sure we're taking uh, treatment to closer to people at home so they don't have to drive so far or really come into Charlottesville. They can get that same high quality of care closer to their homes. Um, the other thing that we, the other region that we want to get to is Northern Virginia is, uh, region. Um, the organization uh, recently acquired uh, two facilities over in the Prince Williams as well as the Haymarket area and trying to make sure that we are able to serve those communities up there with uh, the high quality of care that they're able to get here in Charlottesville, again, closer to their homes. Thank you, Wendy. Tom? We all know that breakthroughs in cancer prevention, diagnosis, and treatment are highly dependent on adequate funding. Can you explain how this impacts our cancer center? Yeah, thanks, Gary. This is a really important question, particularly for the audience to understand. So as part of an NCI designated cancer center, we do receive some money that are in the category called developmental funds. And these are funds that are used to foster pilot projects. So you already heard about the Mike Weber, Mike Williams, Craig Portell collaboration that was initially supported from, grant, from uh, the center, center funding from the NCI. But philanthropic funding is extremely important to complement that. So to give you an example, um, we report out, uh, this is something that's measured by the NCI. So we reported this out at our last renewal that we spent uh, $3 million in developmental funds 500, roughly $500,000 from the grant itself, but 2.5 million from philanthropic contributions. The NCI wants to know how you use that money. Do you just spend it wisely? So the so-called return on investment in terms of future funding brought in from NCI turns out to be more than $16 million. So that's a return on investment of more than five to one. We all would like to have that return on our own, our own funds and our bank accounts. So we've done a really great job uh, in shepherding uh, resources through uh, NCI and through private donations. But it's extremely important because it's so competitive to get a grant. At the NCI, it's roughly 8 or 10% of grants are funded. 
you need extreme extensive data beforehand. And this is what the money from pilot funds provides, enabling you to real, be very competitive for even larger grants from the N NCI and the NIH. Thank you, Tom. Uh, well, now let's turn to some questions that have been submitted by our audience today. So Tom, first one's for Tom. Uh, can you tell us about some of the innovative clinical trials that the center has run or is running? Yeah, thanks, Gary. Again, this is probably the bottom line, most important part of being an NCI designated comprehensive cancer. We've uh, kind of echoed this throughout the entire program today. It's the translation, if you will, of UVA science to have tangible benefit in the clinic. You already heard a lot of examples from Dr. Kelly, and I also gave a few from Dr. Slingoff and the Weber Portel collaboration. So let me just spend a little bit of time telling you one other very exciting uh, UVA protocol that got started here from our own research. And it's collaboration of uh, Shana Showalter in our in surgery, Division of Surgical Oncology, and uh, Tim Showalter in radiation oncology. So we all know that treatment for breast cancer often uh, involves multiple physicians. This is called multidisciplinary care. This is exactly what we deliver here at UVA Cancer Center every day. This protocol then was a combination of surgical oncology, radiation oncology, getting together and being able to uh, address a newly diagnosed woman with breast cancer and deliver treatment all in one day. So I'll tell you how this works. It's an interoperative radiation therapy uh, with the surgeon actually excising the breast cancer. Uh, we have a mobile imaging machine uh, in our cancer center that uh, directs the biopsy and makes sure that all the cancers are removed. And that sets up the radiation therapy field. So then um, based on the criteria through radiation therapy, we're able to um, envision and deliver radiation therapy. It's called focused radiation therapy. This is delivered uh, in under one hour. This compares the standard treatment that a woman needs to uh, take for radiation therapy that could last from every day for three to six weeks. So this is obviously amazing convenience for our patients to be able to deliver the surgery, complete the entire therapy in one day at the UVA Cancer Center. Wow, thank you. Um, Wendy, uh, what steps is the Cancer Center taking to enroll patients of color in its clinical trials and how are we, how are we reaching out to them? Um, that's a great question. Um, thank you, Gary. One of the things that we are working closely with the UVA Cancer Center that Dr. Lochran pointed out is our community outreach and engagement program is working closely with our community partners, um, having listening sessions. I think one of the great things that we recently did is we had listening section, sessions with community leaders uh, from our churches, um, from our not-for-profit organizations, uh, from our teachers, uh, from our community health centers to make sure we really understand the needs of the community and understand what, how we can position ourselves to really take care of our patients within our community, both in the Charlottesville area as well as in Virginia. I think one of the things that um, we have to do from an, a comprehensive cancer center perspective is making sure that we are taking care of our patients, our patients in our catchment area. And one of the ways we can do that is really reaching out to them and letting them know we are here. We can see and we hear the issues that are out there and making sure that we are deliberately providing those services for our patients. Um, in terms of, um, in terms of reaching out to specific patient populations, we have different programs that are grant funded that we use to really provide so, some screening efforts. Uh, for example, one that's called Every Woman's Life is a program that we use to re really reach out to those patients who might not have insurance or might not be able to go in and pay for screening for their cervical or breast cancer screenings and being able to provide that service to them free of charge. And if there is an outcome of cancer related to any of those screenings, then we have a pathway to lead to bring them into the cancer center and actually provide them uh, with treatment. 
Um, so that is just a few things. And then expanding out and using our research efforts to really point out on where based on diversity and based, based on uh, the populations and the incidence of the prevalence of cancer is making sure that we are directly reaching out to that community and providing them access to care. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Kimberly, the latest innovations in cancer diagnosis and treatment seem to be in personalized treatments and immunotherapy. Um, what is the Cancer Center doing and investigating in this regard? Yeah, so as uh, Dr. Lochran mentioned, uh, we have really been pioneers before the immunotherapies became um, de rigueur, if you, if you will, with uh, Craig Slingloff. Um, some of the other really interesting things is this intersection and how to really activate the immune system to go after the cancer. So there's been work done um, with Focus Ultrasound um, with clinicians and then also Rich Price from the Biomedical Engineering Department. And what they've found is that when you use Focus Ultrasound, so it's not just ultrasound like when um, a woman goes and gets a uh, the obstetrics, right? <laughs> like when they go to look at the baby, this is special ultrasound that's designed to disrupt the tumor, mechanically disrupt the tumor. You're throwing sound waves at it. And what they found is not only does it um, have its own effect, anti-tumor effect, but it also, how it's doing it is it activates the immune system. And the combination of those things have really been doing wonderful things in our breast cancer models. And I think the next step is to um, move that into um, the clinic. And so that's just some of the things that we're looking at. Um, other targeted therapies, uh, UVA has been pioneers at looking at molecular mechanisms, really understanding how the cancer works and have been able to parlay that into different molecules that have been licensed out to multiple different um, pharma or even started um, different um, different biotech companies that um, are doing this. So um, those are in clinical trials and then a ceramide nanoliposome. So I could go on and on, but um, <laughs> which I, I think is a great thing. It really is saying how much that we are doing. So there's in really what we are doing, it can be boiled down into four different categories. Um, one is early detection. Um, and so we've got a high risk pancreas center that really um, looking at prevention with smoking cessation and also the obesity, but also early detection. We know that the earlier you get the cancer, the better the patient outcome is going to be. And so by, by really looking at screening, so we, we have investigators and clinicians that are looking at earlier detection. We have the immunotherapy that we talked about, the image guided, which is what Dr. Lochran was just describing. And then also this focus ultrasound I just was talking about, novel therapeutics that are in the clinic. Um, mine ZB131 is in the clinic. Mark Kester has the ceramide nanoliposomes that, that um, tumors have different me metabolic state than healthy cells. And so his nanoliposomes are are seeking out the alternate cancer metabolic state. And he's been able to have good success um, combining those with other drugs. And then the other part is overcoming resistance to therapies. And we haven't touched on that, but why is that important? We know that, the, that most patients, so for example, in ovarian cancer, 80% of those patients diagnosed will respond to conventional platinum chemotherapies. But over time, those patients will all become resistant. Their tumors will be resistant to platinum therapies. So how does that happen? And what else can we do so that way um, we cure it and kill the cancers right from the beginning or when those drugs stop working, what is the alternative? So that way we can really improve patient outcome. So it's really those four areas and we are pioneering in all four of those areas. So it's it's, Incredible to see my colleagues. It's an incredible honor to be a uh, co-director of the Cancer Therapeutics Program and um, just really amazing to be at UVA. It is amazing to be at UVA. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, Tom, can you tell us about uh, some of the research at UVA is doing related to orphan blood cancers? Sure, I don't usually like to talk about my own work, but since that question addresses that, 
Uh, <laughs> it says it was um, submitted by Tom. Yeah, it's submitted by. <laughs> I'm sure I wasn't Kenna, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so anyway, yeah. So we have a great program in rare blood diseases, uh, experts in the world in T cell leukemias, lymphomas. Uh, including my own work in a disease I discovered when I was a fellow at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle um, on a disease called LGL leukemia. We see patients from all around the world. Uh, and actually that ability to see those patients actually comes directly from a philanthropic donor who basically said, look, I want to take away any barrier from anybody in the world that wants to see you. So he established a travel fund, for example. Um, we were really lucky, I would say. We've been really great in recruiting lots of people here, probably like 100 people faculty level in like eight years. But uh, one of the more recent examples is uh, Owen O'Connor, who is uh, from New York City. He was all at all those famous places like Sloan Kettering that now we're part of, of being a comprehensive cancer center just like them, uh, and Columbia. And he is the world's expert in T-cell lymphomas. And he's uh, actually established a worldwide consortium for T-cell lymphoma research. Um, we were just really grateful to receive uh, like a $5.6 million gift um, from an anonymous donor to continue this cutting edge research in leukemias and lymphomas. Thank you, Tom. And thank you for the work that you're doing. Oh, um, you. uh, Wendy, uh, how is a uh, cancer patient and family mental health being addressed at the center? Um, thank you, Gary. Um, I mentioned earlier that cancer is definitely a treatment that, um, that affects the patient and the family members and other caregivers and friends. Um, and it's a very, um, it's a difficult disease to go through. So addressing the whole patient, not just the cancer itself, but the whole patient includes the mental health aspect of it and we have access to psychology and psychiatric care right here within the building and also our social services support um, is here in the building um, this was impacted a little bit uh, the in-person availability definitely due to the pandemic um, but we also transitioned through telemedicine the ability to still provide access to those services for our patients. And that is something that we have carried on even after the pandemic or where we're in a good place right now is, um, is being able to provide access to mental health uh, care to our patients here in the center, but also at home. Some of the challenges that they have can be better dealt with when they're in their home status and you engage the entire family. And so being able to use telemedicine uh, capabilities has really helped us to reach a, a bigger selection of people and a bigger uh, patient panel um, to say. The other things that we do here is provide peer-to-peer -peer support. And when I talk about peer-to-peer -peer is saying, you know, I'm a patient who had breast cancer and I'm, and I'm now I'm in remission. I connect to a patient who's currently going treatment through the treatment and have that same um, sort of the same partnership within the patients and somebody for them to reach out to and to talk to them about what is going on. And this has really been accepted greatly by our patients. We started off with breast cancer and we are hoping to expand those programs, the peer-to-peer -peer programs to a lot of other cancer um, disease types. So we can offer that same support. When you talk about caregivers, it's the same thing, connecting a caregiver to a caregiver so that they can share, you know, talk about the same experiences and that is all around mental health and the ability to have resilience and to continue to having the strength to take care of the patient themselves. We have other programs. We offer yoga. We offer Nia, which is um, sort of a mixture of uh, dance and martial arts that was developed by somebody here at UVA and it's specific to UVA, but it's a mindfulness practice that we offer our cancer, cancer patients and their caregivers. Again, when you talk about innovation and research, those are some of the things that we're able to offer here at UVA. And the other thing that I like to mention is, is journaling and art. Right, things that can take people out of their mindset and being able to journal. And we offer all those practices and supportive care and mental health um, sort of capabilities here for our patients. Thank you. Um, you can feel that we're not just treating the disease, but we're treating the patient and their family and their surroundings. Thank you for all that you're doing. Um, Kimberly, um, 
um, let's see, I'm sorry. Um, could you talk about how you coordinate your research and work internationally? Oh, um, so <laughs> that's done by a lot of different conferences. So there's the American Association of Cancer Research. There's specific, like um, my work is mostly GI cancers, pancreas and bile duct cancer. Um, so, uh, you know, just like we collaborate across grounds, we co collaborate across the state um, throughout the country. I have strong collaborations with OHSU, um, that's the Oregon Health Systems um, in, in Detroit, but then also internationally. So the molecule that I discovered, cancer-specific plectin, the healthy version of it, healthy cell version of it, plectin, was well described by, by Gerhard Vichy at the University of Vienna, and he graciously gave us reagents and things, um, and then invited me out to meet his lab and, and give a seminar. So at, by our nature, the more collaborative we are, the better um, we are, and then that way, it's cost effective too. I'm not making all new reagents and, and things. And, and in that way, together, we move the science um, forward. And in moving the science forward, we start with the best treatment. So um, in terms of clinical trials, uh, by the time we think it would get international, that's when you'd have a biotech or a pharmaceutical company that would be Oh, no. 25 million to um, make the drug, um, you know, 25 million to make the drug and then 200,000 a patient to do the, to do the study. So it's not something that's, that, uh, that's easy, but we're committed to doing it. Tom, please jump in. Um, I was just going to add another comment. I think the audience would appreciate this because we're often asked, okay, you're an NCI designated cancer center. How do you collaborate with the other 51 comprehensive cancer centers. So this is actually a part of the formal review when we go in for the application. And we list uh, every publication that UVA scientists have written, but also like who we've collaborated with. And uh, it was roughly about 40% of all the papers of which there are thousands over five years are co-authored with other scientists from NCI designated cancer centers across the country. So we do collaborate tightly with our colleagues. Thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, Tom. Uh, and we have time for one more question, uh, and it continues in that spirit of collaboration. Uh, Wendy, how does UVA work with patients uh, in or from other hospitals around the Commonwealth, and why should someone come to UVA for a second opinion? Um, great question. Um, you know, I, I think I've talked a little bit about, about this here, is the ability for us to provide these high quality uh, cancer treatments, as well as the availability of all the clinical trials that now we are able to provide. Um, we are, you know, being a comprehensive cancer center really puts us in a place where we are attracting top talent. So providers who really want to do research and be, people who want to build that uh, part of their um, uh, resume or their part of their work professionally, we are attracting those people here. The patients around the country, that is what they're seeking now. The ability to have internet and access to information on the internet uh, has really helped um, spread the word of who, who UVA is and who other cancer centers are and who's within that 52 groups, right? A lot of patients are looking for top quality care. And right now with the ability to go in and uh, look for the cancer centers closest to you and being the only comprehensive cancer center here in Virginia, we are definitely going to be able to take care of our, of our patient population here in Virginia, who otherwise, if they're looking for a comprehensive cancer center, would go to other states. So that is one key thing that I think uh, we're going to do. And as, as Dr. Lochran mentioned, uh, you know, collaborating among the, two, the 52 sites, uh, from not only a patient care perspective, second opinion, for example, we've gotten calls from, uh, you know, states around, uh, patients from around the states um, asking us, you know, you, I hear you have this one doctor who performs this specific often cancer treatment, right? And then we are able to say, yes, come to UVA and we have travel funds for you to be able to come here and get that second opinion um, here for us to take care of you. I think, um, 
we are really a great participation in other um, cancer center uh, or cancer organizations, professional organizations there and have great speakers get uh, some of our doctors are really uh, publish a lot of their articles out there. And with that uh, reputation out there, we are able to attract really patients who want to seek a second opinion in a comprehensive cancer center. Wonderful. Wendy, thank you so much. And thank you to Kimberly and thank you for Tong. To Tong. Uh, and unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions today, but I'll turn it back to our host, Amy Carr, who will share a few closing remarks, including information about how you can learn more about the UVA Cancer Center. Hello, everyone. That hour flew by. Um, what a fascinating discussion. Um, thank you so much to Gary for moderating. And before you go, I want to ask you one more question. Uh, you know, Tom and others mentioned how important philanthropy is to UVA Cancer Center and how it helps advance research and our other missions. Um, you've already shared a little bit about your personal experience with cancer. I wonder if you could share briefly as well why you are a donor to UVA Cancer Center. Uh, Amy, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to participate today. I feel strongly about supporting UVA Cancer Center because I realize um, that it's only because of generous philanthropic investments that this center can do the kind of work that it, that it does and so much of all that we've learned today. Um, I'd encourage everyone here to consider how you can support the Cancer Center and through it, the patients and our community as a whole. Thanks so much, Gary. And thanks again to our panel, Tom, Kimberly, and Wendy for sharing your wisdom and stories about the Cancer Center's good and great work. Most of all, thank you to our audience for joining us today. We really appreciate your interest in and support of UVA Cancer Center. While we weren't able to get to everyone's questions, we covered a lot of important topics. Uh, cancer is a, a very big topic. As I mentioned earlier, a recording of this webinar will be sent in a follow-up email so you can revisit the conversation. In that message, we will also include all the links that have been shared in the chat during the webinar today, as well as additional resources and information about UVA Cancer Center. And if you would like to learn more about making a gift to UVA Cancer Center, please see the link in the chat. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks again for joining us.